Well, certainly the difference between Chandler and Manhattan is stark. <laughs> Daunting. Yeah. But that's, that's by design. This is about learning. It's about getting out on public roads and proving that the technology is safe and consumers like it and businesses can make money by developing it. Relative to Manhattan, I've looked at Manhattan carefully um, in the research I've done. And the taxi system, for example, um, has a lot of improvements that can be realized. And I, th I think we're probably maybe in a 10-year in a window where we could handle the, the complexity that you see. No in, kidding, in 10 years. We're always going to have to, to look at counterfactuals, too, because it, for every mishap or accident with self-driving that is going to be played up to the hilt, right. In the backdrop of that are the, are the number of, of fatalities per year with, with you know, yes. driver-operated cars. So, yeah. But they're not going to get, doesn't get the same place. So you're always going to have to deal with that. No, absolutely. Today there's 1.3 million people a year dying on the world's roadways. That's the World Health Organization. That's epidemic in scale. And 90% or more of those crashes are due to human error. So I believe the biggest risk we have here is not realizing this potential as soon as possible. If we get there one day sooner, we're going to save 3,000 lives. So this is about developing the technology, proving it out, and getting it ready for everyone. Were you a skeptic at one point? I, I would imagine being from Detroit and the auto industry there, that, that may have been something that you didn't necessarily believe at the very beginning. I wasn't a skeptic, but I did believe the car-to-car uh, -car communication was going to be a big part of the solution. And today I believe we can get this done with digital maps and sensors and um, computers on board. Mm -hmm. uh, so no, I'm an optimistic technologist by nature. I think we can do it. Should the government be doing more to enable this going forward? If, say, there was a big infrastructure spend in, in the next couple of years, should, should this be built into the thinking? For well, the long term? Yeah. First of all, I don't think we need a lot of infrastructure spend to do this. The real breakthrough is GPS and satellites and data, so it's not dependent on roadway infrastructure. I think the government's been doing a good job, both at the federal and state level. They're allowing companies like Waymo and General Motors and others to do this work on public roads. That's the only place we're going to prove it out, and so far they haven't put up any barriers to get in the way of that learning. I always, I, I don't you know, I haven't looked into it enough to, to understand how you uh, just pre prevent systems from going down. I, it, it's just that, I, you know, my GPS, if I'm in an area where, you know, it might take a couple of minutes before it comes back, it, it's going to have to be on board, isn't it? It's going to have to be Well, there's self a lot. Yeah, what you do is basically you do have a GPS, but you're downloading the information up the road for about a mile. And so even if you lost your GPS on board the vehicle, you have that hacking, digital map. That's only um, 60 seconds yeah. if you're going 60 yeah. miles an hour. Well, cer certainly hacking is a very important issue, but hacking impacts all facets of our life, your medical records, your financial records. And so this is not a unique issue to self-driving cars. Believe me, the experts... Yeah, but one's, one's a more quick life and death decision than another. Like, it'd be horrible to have your, ba your bank hacked. It'd be horrible to have your me medical yeah, records back yeah, hacked. We, but we I think if hacked, I had to choose yeah. between those and having my car hacked... Yeah, or, or your airplane. Yeah, I mean, right, exactly. Yeah. So, so these are, there, there are experts different. out there working hard on that in order to put that kind of robustness into the system. That's part of the learning process. Again, we're, we're looking at 40,000 Americans dying on roadways yeah, no right now, so we've got to get, yeah. get to these solutions. It's a cure for this epidemic of roadway transportation. Do you, do you think this, this race is an all uh, or nothing? One company is going to get there first and be the best. I mean, Toyota investing in Uber clearly a rival to, to, to the company you're advising in, in Waymo. Do you think one will get there first and, and sort of take an enormous amount of market share? Certainly that possibility is there. This is complex technology to develop and it has a network scale behind it. And I think it's going to be about providing the best experience for people riding around. I call that the ultimate riding machine. And that experience is more than just going from point A to point B. You have to do that safely. You have to do that conveniently and affordably. So, yeah, this is a very, very important technology race. And I think it's important for companies to be in it.